My practice as an artist is very driven by my connection with nature. And so I am a gardener and an animal lover and a hiker and a bushwalker. And I am forever looking for the, the small miracles and, and wonder in the world. My name is Claire James and I'm an artist from Victoria. And the title of my work is I Made This For You. So I made this for you is a, is a painting gift that I made for the gardens here at Eden. So it's a work on paper, about four metres long and about one and a half wide. And I made the piece with the intention that it would be consumed by the wildlife um, and inhabitants of Eden Gardens. I've done a lot of work where I have uh, sort of collaborated with slugs and snails before, and I know that the way that they gnaw through paper in a very, um, they have like a rasp, like tongue. And so I used the knowledge that I have gained over working with them before, knowing what they do and don't like. I made this piece, which is kind of like a gift to the garden, like a floral gift with a tag. But I made the flowers, a lot of the flowers in it out of plant extracts and other organic materials like uh, spinach leaves. Uh, like I, I juiced a lot of things. I made different sorts of tea. I used spices. I used um, petals all smashed up and the colours extracted so that I could build up a beautiful edible piece with egg yolks and then I've added into seeds and things for the birds with the open invitation for it to be consumed in the next you know, five, five, six months. There was a few years back where I, through sort of struggling with my mental health actually and feeling like I wanted to just run away from everything, but I'm a mum and I would not run away you know, from my children. Instead of disappearing into the desert or the forest, I decided why don't I just sleep in, in, in the garden for a month and just start to, you know, kind of bring my attention rather than all of the spiraling out of control, the things that I'm not able to change with climate catastrophe and, and lots of environmental issues that were giving me dreadful anxiety. I decided I would just like simplify my life and my art practice by sleeping in the garden for the whole month of March. And it was through my observations during this time that I started to, to notice the way that the snails and slugs would come out every night from the same place. They really, um, I kind of got to know a lot of organisms and, and cycles and things happening that I wasn't aware, not that I wasn't aware of, I wasn't, I, I didn't know my nocturnal garden as well as my daylight garden. So it was from that point that I started to um, really, I started making sculptures of slugs and snails and I started looking at um, if I left some dry dog food out on a big piece of black fabric at night time, the, in the morning all the slugs trails would be these beautiful kind of silver drawings and then I would embroider into those and so the slug and snail thing just kind of went from there and it's been pretty serious. <laughs> the biggest challenges I have as an artist would be my confidence to try to sell myself uh, and my business skills. To be an artist you have to be you have to be a self promoter, you have to run your own business, you have to be applying for grants, applying for shows, photographing your work. You know, there's just this huge amount of things that behind the making the work, the making the work I could do every single day for the rest of my life. Trying to sell work to the world is, um, is, is something that I just have to keep working on. I was very lucky to get a stipend to be part of this um, Eden Unearthed um, exhibition and coming from interstate, it does cost a lot, just the logistics of driving up here and having accommodation in Sydney and things like that. So just to have that um, sort of stipend to help me get the work up here gave me the chance to make the work. To actually install it has been um, fun with the weather the la this weekend. It's been pretty um, pretty Melbourne-like actually. I think Melbourne gets a, a bad rap for doing all the weathers, but it's been torrential rain up here. And I didn't want to hang the paperwork on the day that was expecting to get 50 mils. So 
with my uh, 14 and 12 year old, they've been my assistants and we've been up and down ladders and we've been backwards and forwards. We've had all sorts of all sorts of logistical challenges, but it's it's up now and it looks really good. And I've never seen the work um, vertical because I've worked on it on the floor the whole time. I've literally sat on the paper and knelt on it in the freezing cold winter without heating in Melbourne. It was about 10 and 11 degrees many days that I was working outside on it, but um, it's done and it's here now. One part is the four metre original painting, which will really change over time. So before I brought the work up, I had it professionally photographed in a studio and then I've had a high quality, like artist quality print done on canvas. They're almost side by side facing each other a little bit. Viewers will be able to throughout the few months. I thought if I didn't have an image of what it looked like, because it is quite beautiful to begin with, I always like seeing before and after shots of, you know, it's terrible of, of flood events or of, you know, gardens before and after and things like that. So this is quite literally, this is what it looked like and this is what it is now. And you can, you know, already, it's been about three weeks since it was photographed. Some of the colors have already changed. So it's nice to have the, the two and yeah, they can be compared off on another. It, it's an experiment. The whole piece is an experiment. I'm not sure it might, might be quite literally a flop. It might flop on the floor really quickly. We'll have to see. I love these gardens and I love the dragons the most. I want one. <laughs>